Last week, we got invited out to Texas, Austin, Texas, to compete in the first ever Rogue Invitational Strongman event. This was the first time the Strongman was involved in this, and it was a very, very, very great experience. It was the top 10 um, athletes in the world. Myself and Luke, Brian Shaw, Novikov, Kilikowski, Martins Lissis, Jeff Caron, Shivlikov, Rob Kearney, and Jerry Pritchett. First competition back for Martins Lissis. He's had some kind of career ending injuries and got stem cell stuff to sort him out, and you know, he came back and it was so, so good to see him back, see Romark. Oh, they was, it was so good to have them two back in action and just to have their vibe around. So. Then we had Alexei Novikov. I see him nearly every week now, me and him are, he's a great athlete as well. I love Novikov, there's so many nice things I can say about him. Brian Shaw. The blueprint of straw man in my eyes, great seeing him again. Uh, first time seeing him since World. It was really, really nice to see Rob Kearney. Obviously, Rob Kearney's had a, uh, a bad injury that he suffered doing their law press world record. And obviously he had a testicle cancer as well and he beat that and you know, to see him back competing was a very, very, very special feeling as well, you know, to mix with him. I love him, I love Joey, so it was nice to see those guys back. There was a couple of guys that got a, a call, um, or the, sorry, that didn't get a call up, um, Trey Mitchell, um, after his win at Brian Shaw, but uh, John covered that, you know, John Todd, the, the organiser that kind of invites us all. Um, so unfortunately Trey didn't get a call up because the invitations were done before Trey's done so well. So we all know what an amazing strongman Trey is, but um, I'm sure Trey will get an invite to these shows kind of next year. Um, and yeah, looking forward to see how he does. But yeah, so happy to get invited, both Tom and myself. It's a huge show, the last show of the year. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna have a little chat and tell you how things went. So guys, event one was the elephant deadlift bar so this event was uh, you see this event really only in Arnold's and obviously we see it in the Rogue so this is like a big I think the bar is eight foot I don't really know and it's super super flexible uh, it's called an elephant bar I think just because it's so big and you know elephants are massive so <laughs> uh, there must be something to do with that I don't really know but anyway it's such a flexi bar you had three lifts so you had to start on the lows that <laughs> you can start on with 340 kilograms and you pick three lifts after that you do your first lift you got a minute to give your second one and your third one you could give but you could change uh, your third lift if you wanted to so you've got to be a bit kind of tactical as well see what other guys are lifting try and maybe bump it up a little bit more than them for me personally i wasn't being uh, tactical i hadn't prepped for it i just went with 360 then i got 384 i think it was And then I went 404, and I, I missed the 404 deadlift. Yeah. I was relatively happy, you know, it was the first time for me pulling on the elephant bar. My free lifts were 360 kilograms, 400, and then it was like 411 or 412 kilograms, I think. I pulled 360 just to kind of get a wee opener, just to see how it felt. And when I pulled that, I was like, holy crap, this is going to be a very good event. Um, I didn't feel any weight in the bar until I got past my knees, just because of the flex of it. Um, I think, to be honest, I think the axle training that we've been doing for the Giants live shows has really helped, because like I said, the weight didn't feel anything to me. And then I went straight to 400 after. I wanted to do a bigger second jump because uh, a lot of people were oh, like doing 380, 390 and failing, so I was like, if I get 400, it's a decent point for me. I pulled 400 like it was again, fast, and then I was like, right, let's just do it. I, in my head, I wanted 420, but JF had did 426, so I was like, right, there's no point. Let's just do 412. Uh, I think it was like Rob Kearney and Brian and me that were on 412. Those two failed, failed so if I had hit this lift, it would have been good enough for second place. And you know, thankfully again, I did it and. Again, it was smooth, you know. I was very surprised with this because obviously having that kind of hamstring issue I had, then changing into a suit 
and wearing figures of eights. It was really nice that I still have that raw, that raw deadlift power there, and then I used that to kind of my best of my ability and to pull 412k, 6k under my PB or something on an elephant bar, which I've never used before. Oh, it was a great start to the competition for me. You know, to only get beat by JF Caron as well was a huge, huge confidence booster for myself, so. Event two was this year, dumbbell ladder. Possibly the heaviest dumbbell medley you'll ever see. I actually did this a week before at Britain's Strongest Man. My PB going into this dumbbell was 110 kilograms, which I hit at Britain's. And I think the opening weight off the sear ones were maybe 112 or 113. I think the second one was like 124 or something. So I said to Sinead, pointless. I'm not even going to get one rep. I was just like, let's just go put it on my shoulder, plop it down. Obviously, after the first event, you go back to the hotel and you kind of have a chill out and break. And when I was going back to my hotel, I was kind of just thinking to myself, if I get two dumbbells, I know that's going to be massive point for myself. Got the first one up, boom, did it. I was like, Wow, I just hit a PB. And then the second one, uh, again, you had a minute to do each one. So I was just took my time, second one, got up, did it. I was like, oh, oh, da! from going from 110 to 124K, basically hitting a PB of 16 kilograms on a dumbbell. And I've never ever placed higher than 10th place on a dumbbell in my whole strongman career. To then place fourth place on a dumbbell was bonkers to me. I was like, this is gonna be a good competition because those were the two events that I were worried about. And I knew that if I got past the dumbbell in sixth, seventh, sixth place, fifth place, I'd been all right. But to you know, come in the top four in dumbbell press and beat some of the best pressers, it was a very, 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 very great moment for myself. I loved that. I couldn't get my elbow high enough to press the dumbbell. So I was kind of having a low elbow and trying to press these big dumbbells just didn't, didn't work very well. Yeah, I thought I could have had a good good attempt at kind of two or three of them, but I got the first one, which was fine. Second one just wasn't there. But I think this was one of my highlights of the whole show was um, seeing Alexei Novikov press every single dumbbell. Um, it was insane to see him hit that 300 pound dumbbell. Yeah, Alexei's just a machine at pressing dumbbells. He's absolutely insane. So. Um, huge, huge respect to Alexi for, for smashing them. Fireworks went off after Alexi pressed the, the 300 pound dumbbell. It gave him some good points for me. Disappointed, um, but again, silver lining. Pressing that first dumbbell with a, with a dodgy shoulder was still okay. So, you know, something I need to really work on going into the off season is the dumbbell press. So event three, this is day two of the competition. This just looked like a monster. This massive creature that just came to life. 20,000 ton, had like loads of legs coming out, like small ones, medium ones, big ones. And you just turn this thing and it would just look like this, ah. Oh. You couldn't really explain to it. It's such a cool thing in the eye. It was just left out there the whole time because I think people were like, dude, check that out. That's awesome. What do you do with that? And then, so it was really good for people to actually see, like, every, like I said, everyone walked past like, what? What? I think it was a really cool visual thing, and I think they did, Rogue did a, a good, uh, the right thing of leaving that out to let people know, like, wow, what are they going to do with this? So, but with this event, I was very, very confident in myself because I did a turntable at World Strongest Man, and all I needed to do, I think, was I've done it at World Strongest Man. Let's just do exactly what I did at Worlds, uh, do it here, and it'll be all right. And uh, it was, it started off flat, went downhill, then it went uphill quick. So when it went downhill, I started getting my mo momentum up so that when it hit the uphill bit, I was fast enough to get through that and that's where a lot of people kind of failed you'll see like there was three or four markers around where the uphill bit was 
and I was just able to kind of fight through that and, you know, nearly get one whole turn. I didn't expect to not have to work as hard. You know, I thought maybe a few of the other athletes were going to get a whole turn or a tur turn in a wee bit, but um, to then see Martins just go behind me, I was like, wow, I've just won the Wheel of Pain. Felt amazing for it, felt very, very good to do that, and I felt really strong, but yeah, that was a great event, and that's going to look so good when you, if you can see that. If you see clips of that, guys, check out, because wow, it was cool, and it was an awesome event for me, so. As the wheels turn, the sand lands on the bottom, and there's a dead weight again, so you can't ever build up momentum. It's just a constant push. So this one is a, it's a 60 second time limit. So the first, or sorry, the, the furthest person to push the, the implement round in a circle. So it does it, I think it's in distances around the outside um, wins the event. So I think I was third up in this. I did okay, I was quite happy in it. First time doing the Wheel of Pain. I remember doing some warm-ups and it felt awful. I just felt disgusted. I didn't think I was going to push it anywhere near as far as I did. But it was good. Um, I think I got top five, maybe fourth or fifth in this one, which was good for me. Um, again, in that position, my shoulder really has got an impingement. So when I, was, when I was in that position, it was quite sore. But um, yeah, I was relatively happy. Big Tom came out and smashed it, got the win in this one, which was cool to see. It was funny, after he won, Tom went for a little jog, <laughs> which was, we were all dying, getting oxygen, and Tom was running around doing a wee lap around the, the baseball stadium. Um, but yeah, fair play to Tom, he, he really smashed it. And I think Martins came second in this again, so this was a really good battle between Martins and Tom. The Wheel of Pain was a mad event to do, and I'm so happy we got to do it. Event number four was the, the newly made thousand pound yoke into the log press for three reps. So I think it was 160 kilos for, for three reps. Warming up for this felt really good. Yeah, felt dead comfortable. Hit the log, no problem. Hit the yoke, no problem. The yoke went really well for me. It was, felt really comfortable. Again, Rogue smashing out the, the build process and the yoke felt super comfortable, super solid. But I think one thing I did take away from that is that I couldn't breathe after doing the yoke. So I had my belt really tight did the yoke no problem, then I went into the log press, just couldn't breathe, couldn't get any air into my my body and after doing two reps in the log, the third rep, um, almost passed out. So, But again, I was up quite early on and I think I was up third or fourth in this event, so I felt like I really had to rush, you know, so I didn't have the, the privilege of seeing what any, everyone else had got time-wise, so with hindsight, um, I should have kind of taken taken my time, kind of had a little breather. We had plenty of time to do this, and I was a bit annoyed at this. I should be winning these type of events, I, I feel, but unfortunately, um, it wasn't my day, and uh, I came, I think it was seventh, sixth or seventh in this event. This is bonkers, because the thing that fried my brain was what shoes do I wear? A lot of the athletes wear like powerlifting shoes uh, to lift a log, then they wear trainers to lift a yoke, so it's kind of like, what do we sacrifice uh, so it was a really kind of, yeah, it was hard that, you know, it's picking your shoes I never thought would be hard for an event, but yeah, it was. So I went with the blue Noble shoes for the reason was it was had a solid, uh, solid platform and I felt very solid in the yoke and very solid in the log. So when I got up to it, um, there were some massive times on this. Like, I mean, everyone was going rapid with the yoke, but I think what they did wrong was they went too fast with the yoke and gassed out for the log. And because I was, I think, second, third, last up, I had learned this, you know, because I was I was going to go out all out blazing with the yoke, and then I thought, oh, log's an easy weight, but it was totally wrong because there was a lot of people that were fearing log that I never thought would. So, you know, I kind of went like, right, let's get a decent run with the yoke, not drop it, five, six seconds slower, but let's make up on the log, and that's exactly what I did. Lifting 360. He's got 
a nice steady yoke, uh, yoke uh, walk went over the line and then obviously the log first rep was a bit dodgy at first trying to get used to the footwear but after that it was nice and smooth and I think I did the right tactics there you know again third place in the yoke to a log was again a shock for me you know I'm not one for being in the top three in a yoke anyway so that was again another great event for me and very happy with how I placed in that. So the, the last event, Inverstones over Pitching Post. The Inverstones are kind of more oblong, more of a natural looking stone rather than a, a, a kind of perfect sphere like the Atlas Stones are. So they've got more of a texture to them, more of like a, it's like a sandpaperish kind of feel. I think the last stone's 190, let's just say the first stone's 120. I don't know, something like that anyway. You get something called tacky towels or you get chalk. So tacky towel is basically like a sticky tacky, but you can only dab it onto your skin so it doesn't stick as much as tacky would or you can use chalk, so that's the two options you have. You're only allowed to have two tacky towels. However you want to use it is up to you. So um, yeah, so this again was a very, very interesting event for me because one, I've never lifted these kind of stones before. Two, I never used a tacky towel. So I was just like, right, do I use tacky towel? Do I use chalk? What do I do? So I did the three stones. Again, I was kind of third out. Finished above the, the bottom two guys. Um, and, uh, by this point, I was kind of a bit, a bit knackered, a bit kind of um, fatigued, and uh, went for the fourth one and um, just felt my bicep pull. So uh, for me, that was enough. I kind of, I could have done, should have done, could have, should have, would have done better if X, Y, and Z kind of happened. But it is what it is. It's one of those things. Um, I think the the guys that did well in these, it was Martins won it, um, Tom came second in the Stones, and then I think JF, JF, JF came third. Um, so great performance from them, they smashed it. Um, so yeah, it's something I need to work on, like in a, maybe in more natural-like Stones, they're not like the Atlas Stones. Yeah, really good event. Um, I think it was a, a good event to kind of, finish off with the the Rogue Invitational, the, the Inverse Stones and the crowd certainly loved it, you know, big cheers from the crowd and you know having 7,000 people in the baseball stadium watching was pretty cool so. No this was an event that kind of was going to decide myself and Martin's title but then at the end of the day when I seen Kilikoski just touch the stone, Brian touched the stone, uh, you know Novikov didn't really put all of effort into it so I was like well before I even went up to it I knew Martin's had won the title because there was only another one person to go and I needed two people in front of me or something so anyway what I did was I just wanted to do a nice smooth run you know get sub 30 and I would have been happy and I, that's what I did you know I went under 30 seconds seconds I did did it and I was very happy like I said I didn't train for this event Martins came out and absolutely smashed it um, but we said after to each other we'll, we'll get at World Strongs Man 2022 real stones real tacky is when we're gonna do it and I think you have to remember guys this is a fact that I don't think anybody knows that I've never ever won apart from the Albert stones which are circular I've never won a natural unshaped stone event. Four beat me in Iceland Strongest Man. I've been beaten at some other competition. I got beaten at Mario Martins, so I'm actually the king of only Atlas Stones. <laughs> yeah, so again, you know, second place to end the year. Well, to win Britain's Strongest Man and then top the year off with second place at a Rogue Invitational was, for me, I couldn't wish for it any better, you know, and uh, I just want to say a big massive, massive, massive congratulations to Martins. You know, I love that man. He deserves everything after being out for two years and you know, seeing him kind of struggle, seeing him, if his, if his uh, future's not gonna be uh, bright or whatever happened, you know, but it was nice to ha have get, a st get that stem cell treatment and uh, 
it was nice to see the recovery and you know he trained so hard for this competition and you know he won he was the be best person on the day but I know that we're gonna have great battles together now you know it's nice to see Martins back at like 90% myself there at 90% but when World Strongest Man comes I think myself and Martins are the two guys to watch because we put in a hell of a battle there and yeah, big respect to Martins, Lavro Mark, all of Martins family, his mum, everyone. I just want to wish you a great, great end of 21 and uh, yeah, we'll see you in 2022, folks. Huge congratulations to all those guys, especially to Martins. I think Martins had quite a lot of pressure on him. Um, you know, first event that he's come back in, he's, he's come back with the aim to win and he's done that, so massive. Massive respect to you, Martins. You smashed the competition. You were, yeah, you were the best man throughout the competition and a very, very deserved winner of the first ever Rogue Invitational. My next competition is going to be Britain's Strongest Man in February. Your British Strongest Man, Tom Stockman, will be at Britain's Strongest Man 2022 in February to become the two time Britain's Strongest Man. Turn up if you want. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. Please keep subscribing to our channel. Stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. And please, guys, don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling -a -ling.